The C-Class is one of the absolute best sellers out of the brand Mercedes. And now Mercedes presents the brand new one. And today we have the opportunity to drive that car for the very first time. And we're going to have a closer look what really is new with the new C-Class. Things like new driver assistance, safety systems, new infotainment, new design and very important new engines. But what in detail and how it drives? Let's find out now. The C-Class now always features a full digital cockpit with a screen of 10.25 inch and a touchscreen in the center console upright with 9.5 inch as the size of the display. But you can have more, which means you can have a 12.3 inch digital cockpit and 11.9 inch for this display here. And that together is what I have. And that really is a very, very nice system. As you know already from the Mercedes S-Class or other Mercedes models, you do uh, have different modes inside of the full digital clock, which means you can have the standard instrument cluster I do use at the moment. You can have something that is a bit more reduced. You can have the map or, and some others. Um, and that really works well and is an absolute pleasure to look at. The center system really is the main operational unit for your car, which means you do find, of course, MBUX with voice control. You do can choose between you want to see map, you want to use your phone, you want to uh, choose radio, you want to see the Mercedes apps, or you may want to um, adjust the, um, the system of your car, which is always working with this center console here. And that really is not only something which is nice to look at, it's also a control unit, which is an absolute pleasure to work with. My car is featuring a color which is called Spectral Blue Metallic. Something that you have to pay extra for, but something I really do like a lot because that works perfectly with the shape and design of the new C-Class. Looking at the design, that car now is 1 meter 82 in width, which makes it 1 centimeter wider than its predecessor. Nothing really big regarding to the change, but the design is completely new. So you do find now these big power domes and the hood of the car, which really gives the car more pressure, more power from the front. And when you then look here, we do find a completely different radiator grille. And funny with that one is you do find two different shapes. One is the one we have, which gives, gives, which is a bit more open when you go to the downside of it. And if you have the standard car, it is more rounded. And so you really have a completely different look from the front. This one is a lot more aggressive. So I would say the standard one is meow, that one is raw. And that really makes the difference if you're looking from the front onto the car. Another big thing are these new headlamps. The C-Class now always features LED headlamps, but there is something new, which is an optional feature, and that is called digital light. And with that system, you can not only drive with full beam all the time without disturbing other people, this light system also projects information on the road. Things like you're getting too close to the guy in front of you or things and warnings regarding to blind spot assist. So that really works very well together, comfort and safety as well. On the top, the new front is a bit more aggressive with all of the C-Classes. When you look down here, you find this massive uh, air intakes here and this very sharply shaped uh, front wing and that really gives the car the extra pressure to the side and makes the car really stands very solidly on the road. What really works well is the package out of suspension, steering and braking because that really fits perfectly for the C-Class. So you have a steering which is quite precise but not too nervous. You have a stiff suspension but very comfortable and you do have a brake system which is easy and perfectly to adjust. If you still say, mm, that's too soft for me, no problem because you can adjust and change from standard to sport mode. And then you will find a car which is a lot more crisp, a lot more direct, but still with all the comfort you expect from a Mercedes-Benz. There will be diesel engines available for the new C-Class with a power range between 163 up to 265 horsepower and petrol engines with a power range between 170 up to 258. On top, to the end of the year, you're going to find the new plug-in hybrid models as well. I do not have so many figures of these cars, but I can tell you that Mercedes promises these cars will drive up to 110 kilometers purely electric. Important with the diesel and petrol engines is to know they are all four cylinders and they are all mild hybrids, which means we have the uh, integrated starter generator on board and on top a 48 volt system. All the C-Classes will come with a 9-speed G-Tronic as standard and depending on the model and the trim level, you're going to find these cars rear-wheel powered or with four-wheel drive. The materials and the craftsmanship inside of the C-Class are really very nice. So you do find soft touch up here, up here as well. You do find leather, um, fake leather, metal, wood, everything you would love 
and everything you may expect from a Mercedes-Benz and everything is well made so no noises while driving you can just enjoy your drive inside of the Mercedes everything really very nice and as I said very nicely made the only downside is if you go a bit lower you do find plastic which is here here and here as well and this really is something where I would love to see a bit more of soft touch or leather or a different kind of a cover but um, that really is complaining on very high levels because it is not so often that you touch these things and they look very nice they are well made and so you can really absolutely enjoy the drive in the Mercedes C-Class looking at the side of our car you do find these very nice rims here which are 19 inch but to be honest as standard the C-Class features 17 inch 19 inch is the biggest wheel you can order actually but looking at the car overall it has grown a bit so the new c-class now is 4 meters 75 in length and it got a wheelbase of 2 meters 87 which means we have 6.5 centimeters more in length and about two and a half centimeters more wheelbase on top of this the car now is 1 meter 45 in height and that means about one centimeter less than the predecessor this together really gives the car completely new dimensions and a new sporty look. But on top of this, the design has changed completely, which means we do have now a so-called uh, cap backwards design, which means the greenhouse of the car moves more to the rear of the car, which gives the whole shape a push to the front and makes the whole car a lot more dynamic. On top of this, because we're driving the AMG line, you do find this side sill here, which really presses the car onto the ground and underlines the sportiness of our C-Class again. I started my drive today with the C300D and that really was a pleasure to drive. This engine delivers enough power to give you, yeah, always the support you expect and you want, but quite easy. So the drive was always very smooth and yeah, very nice. And um, the consumption was okay as well because I used about between six and a half and seven liters per hundred kilometer driven, so absolutely fine. Uh, now I'm in the um, C200 as a T model and that is completely different. We do have a 1.5 litre four cylinder here on board that features 150 kilowatts or 204 horsepower and 300 newton meters of maximum torque. And that works well as long as you cruise easily. But as soon as you want to, let's say, accelerate, for instance, on the motorway from 120 upwards, or like here when you want to overtake, um, you really see that the ref's going up the noise goes up as well and then the car really works to accelerate uh, which is not perfect on top of this the acceleration is not like a constant thing it's always like a bit like a pump um, but as said only when you really use the engine so you really have to decide if you're somebody who says I don't I don't care because I just want to drive easy or if you're somebody who wants to drive from time to time a bit more dynamic uh, then you may choose a different one so as said, it isn't mine, but it doesn't mean that it isn't yours. Um, what I do have on top is, uh, is the rear axle steering in my car. And I really have to say that this is an absolute plus and pleasure. Um, overall, the new C-Class drives really nice, really smooth and easy. And you can drive it sporty if you want as well. And with this new uh, rear axle steering, that car really is a lot more dynamic and more easy to handle. So if you do have the money when you order the car, I th think you should definitely tick that box with the extras. The C-Class as a T-model offers a maximum boot capacity of 490 liters with the rear seats up. If you fold down that bench completely, that increases up to 1,510 liters. And that's, by the way, about 30 more than with a predecessor. If we talk about the sedan, we're talking about 455 liters, and that's nearly the same as with a predecessor. But there are good news regarding to the upcoming hybrid models, because they do, of course, deliver a little bit less, about 130 liters in both uh, situations. But you will not have any steps anymore in your boot so that means you're going to have a completely flat floor i think that's great news if you're interested in the new c-class you have to expect here in germany a price that starts at about 41,000 euro but that means you get a standard sedan with 170 horsepower 1.5 liter petrol engine if you say no i want the estate that starts with a c200 but that then also means it starts at about 47,000 euros but if you say you want the big diesel engine, which is the C300D, then you have to expect prices way above 50,000. 
Of course, you can tow something with your new C-Class if you want to. The maximum towing capacity for that car is now 1.8 tons. Of course, the most important driver assist and safety systems are always on board of the new C-Class, which means you do always find an emergency brake system. You do find a cruise control as well as a lane assist. But of course, this is a Mercedes and you can have loads and loads of extras, which makes your car on one hand more comfortable, on the other hand, more safe. Um, but I would suggest to definitely order the so-called driver assistant package or driver assistant uh, package plus, uh, which provides you with a yeah, good um, variety of extra systems, which really lifts the assistance systems of your car to, next, to the next level. And if you then still miss something, you can easily order this, especially well, just tick it in the list. The rear of the new C-Class is now, I think, a bit more dynamic than the one of the predecessor. And that starts with this massive rooftop spoiler here. And then when you go a bit more down, aside of this panel, you do find this completely new taillights, which are now always in LED technology. And for the very first time with the C-Class, they are splitted. And because they are thinner, that really provides a completely different look. And on top of this, because they are splitted, you do have a much bigger or wider tail lid. And that makes it a lot more easy to get things in and out of your boot. When you go further down, you do find this diffuser here and this chrome exhaust there. And this underlines the sportiness of the car. And to make the car look even more solid from the rear, we do have this air out hex here, which really provides you this massive solid look from the rear of the new C-Class. The space the C-Class offers here for the front passengers is really more than enough even for a tall person like me. I'm nearly two meters high and not very thin. And as you can see, I have plenty of space. I find a very nice and good position to drive the car. I have a comfortable seat which offers more than enough support. And as you can see, I still have some headroom left. And this is even because we do have this big sunroof. Um, how about the space behind me? We're going to find out while having a short stop. So this is my short stop to see if I can sit behind me in the new C-Class. My seat is not changed, position is the same. Now let's see if I can enter that car. The C-Class should provide more legroom here at the rear bench. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So, good news, I'm in. And um, yeah, I do really have enough headspace, which is quite surprising. And have a look here. And in front of my knees, I do have space left, which is completely unexpected. So I would say, me, 1 meter 95, do sit behind me. I'm quite heavy, and that's really a positive surprise. Regarding to the compartments, you do find no surprises inside of the C-Class, which means you do have standard compartments in the doors at the front. And when you look at the center console, there is this part here, which you can open and close. And beneath that, you do have, at the very front, the wireless charging. Behind that, two cup holders and a small compartment in the side of it. Behind that, you do find the typical Mercedes armrest, armrest which is split it, and underneath, quite a nice compartment with extra USB sockets. If you go to the rear seats, you do find, of course, standard compartments in the doors and two hidden cup holders in the armrest as well. And if somebody starts the question and says, Lars, do you don't have anything you don't like with the car? I can tell you the answer is quite short because it's still no. That was my very first test drive with the brand new Mercedes C-Class. And I really have to say, when you look at the exterior of the car, I absolutely do like this new fresh look. Very important, the AMG line makes the big difference between Meow and Raw. So I would always buy this extra trim level. When you look at the interior of the car, you do find nice materials, a very nice craftsmanship, and of course, the newest infotainment and MBUX of the newest generation. On top of this full digital cockpit and this upright new center display as a touchscreen, really nicely to look at and very easy to use. On top of this, you do find the most important driver assistance and safety systems as standard, but loads and loads more to explore and to tick the box to get it into your car. And you do find, of course, this nice infotainment and the perfect Mercedes drive. And it's an absolute pleasure to just cruise with the car or do it a bit more sporty. And the rear axle steering is an extra, which you really have to explore and to decide if you want it or not. On the other hand, there are the typical Mercedes pricing, which is 42,000 in Germany. This is where it starts. And you can pay a lot more if you want a higher trim level or some extras. But on the other hand, that car really is a car which deserves a star. Volvo continues to refresh their whole model range. And the next one on the list is the new V60. This is already the second generation of that car and Volvo themselves call it the new 
premium sporty estate. And today we're going to have a closer look how sporty and how much premium that car is. The Volvo V60 T6 inscription is featuring a 2-litre four-cylinder petrol engine and that offers 310 horsepower, 400 newton meters of maximum torque and is combined as standard in that car with an 8-speed automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive. And that together really is more than enough power for that car. Um, you can really drive the car quite sporty and this engine accelerates this car in only 5.8 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour. Uh, top speed is 250, so I think that really works well, but there is one thing I don't like so much um, because you can feel the revs of the car when driving fast. For instance, when you're a motorway, um, you can really feel that you're driving in high revs, um, which is something where I would say I do prefer um, the six-cylinder engines which are not available for that car a bit more because they're I think they have more culture but that's just my personal feeling because very important is the engine is very well insulated so you will not really hear the engine it's more a bit like a feeling but um, as said with 310 horsepower in that car that's more than sufficient There will only be three different engines available when the new V60 will hit the market. These are one petrol and two diesel engines. The diesel engines inside of the so-called D3 and D4 model will deliver 150 or either 190 horsepower. The petrol engine, which is the car we're driving, the T6, that will offer 310 horsepower and a maximum torque of 400 newton meters. Very important to note that only the big T6 comes as standard with the 8-speed automatic gearbox as well as with all-wheel drive. Both of the diesels, they come with a 6-speed manual gearbox and front-wheel power. There will be more engines available in the future for the V60 and very important, there will be some electrified engines as well, the so-called plug-in hybrids. We want to know how much sport is inside of this new V60 and I have to say that you can really drive the car on one end very comfortably I'm very quiet. On the other hand, you can, I would say, let's have some fun with the car um, because with 310 horsepower, there's more than enough power to let the car fly. Um, with the all-wheel drive and a, a very nice suspension, the car really fits well on the track. And um, so I, I can say with the steering, which is very precise and very direct, you can really have some fun with that car. So I would say, yes, there is sports inside of this premium sports estate. If you want to talk about a sporty estate, of course, the look of the car has to be sporty as well. And so let's have a look at the layout and the design of the new V60. Looking at the front of the car, of course, that Volvo as well features the new so-called waterfall design grille here. But the whole car, when you look at it, it looks a lot more flat, a lot more down to the road as we normally know that from Volvo estates. And to give that look the extra kick, we have this very thin um, headlamps here, of course, with daytime running lights in Tors Hammer design and we have them featuring full LED as standard by the way. And to give the car a more sporty look we have these extra air intakes down here and we have these air intakes here at the side and that press the car really close to the road and of course now we can say from the front that's a sporty estate. The new Volvo V60 features the typical Volvo long bonnet which drops to the front and that really is a typical thing for a Volvo today. But more important to give the car a bit more of a sporty look is the car has grown by more than 12 centimeters in length so now it's 4 meters 76 long. And more important to make it even look better is the car um, height has dropped by nearly six centimeters to one meter 42 and that makes the proportions of that car to give him the really the the kick um, regarding to sportiness um, you can have up to 20 inch alloys for the new v60 we have mounted here 19 inch uh, a very nice detail regarding to the design is this line here which really gives you an extra extra impression extra push 
to these wheel arches and I think that makes the car look more sporty but very important for the whole impression of the car are two lines. One is the roof line that drops slightly to the rear and the other one is this window line that comes up here and that, that together with this cut over here gives the car a push forward. So I think that's what we want when we talk about a sporty estate. A typical Volvo estate design element are these very pronounced shoulders here. And what I like is that line starts here and it ends up right here into the taillights. And these taillights are typical Volvo as well because they're going up to here. And that is something you won't find with so many cars. When you look at the rear of the car, the car really stands very solidly on the road. That gives it a sporty look again. And something I really like is the exhaust element down here because this one here is a real exhaust. What I really like with the V60 here is what I do like with all the other new Volvo models. And this is the material, the mixture of the materials and the craftsmanship. Um, in our car, we do have a bicolor leather um, trim here. And that really looks so beautiful and so, so nicely made. Um, this is, I would love to say I have found something where I can say, oh, this, this doesn't work well. but. In this car, it's really absolute a pleasure to touch and to look at all the stuff which you find in here. The new V60 now also has the typical upright touchscreen as the central operating element. The 9-inch screen controls navigation, phone, radio and almost all vehicle settings. The optional head-up display not only supplies the most important driving information, it also warns the driver in dangerous situations. Talking about space of the V60, the car has grown a lot. So about 12 centimeters in length, it has shrinked a bit regarding to the height but you can really feel that you have about 10 centimeters more wheel space inside the car. So as a, even as a tall driver, you re really sit very comfortably inside of the car and you do have more than enough space. The only thing is, I would say as a tall driver, I wouldn't order this big glass roof because as you can see, that runs directly straight above my head. So that means if I wouldn't have that, I would have, have about two, three centimeters more head space, which would make my drive a bit more comfortable. Uh, but very interesting is that I can sit behind me. Um, I have more than enough space in front of my knees there. Um, but the only thing there is, there the sunroof really makes the difference. Because I have to say that I would love to have more, about two, three centimeters more there um, to re really sit, sit comfortably there. Um, but on the other hand, I can sit behind me in this middle class estate. Talking about an estate means, of course, we have to talk about the boot size. And that car here offers you 529 liters of maximum boot capacity with the rear seats up. If you fold them down, that incre increases up to 1,441 liters. But very important for both numbers, that includes that small bit down here. Uh, but something that I really like with the car is that, because that splits the boot in half. And that is very practical if the boot is not completely full, because nothing will roll around. Very important is if you order a car like that, have a closer look regarding to the to the colors because we have with this light interior here that looks very nice but as you can see we met some bad experiences with it so it's quite let's say sensitive but overall i think a reasonable size boot our test car the volvo v60 t6 with the 310 horsepower petrol engine should take an average 8.8 .8 liters per hundred kilometer driven um, regarding to the new uh, measurement system which is called wltp uh, but i have to say we didn't reach that kind of a number during our test drive, our car took between 11 and 12 liters per hundred kilometer driven. But we have to say, of course, we didn't do a standard drive. We were on the motorway quite fast. We did some stops, turnaround stops and so on. So typical for filming. Uh, but on the other hand, it's still far away from what even this new system says it should take. The new V60 offers a variety of driver assistance and safety systems. 
Already the trim level Momentum offers the city safety system, a cruise control, active seatbelts and many more as standard. The list of optional systems is long. For instance, semi-autonomous driving up to 130 km with pilot assist. But also a 360 camera, a rear cross traffic alert or parking assistant are available. The car we are driving with a trim level inscription um, starts at a base price of 53,050 euros here in Germany. And the car comes quite well equipped, so it offers as standard uh, traffic sign recognition, it offers as standard electrical seats, climate control and a lot of other stuff. But if you really want to have a premium estate, you have to put some extras in and that costs extra. So our test car, as we're driving it, with all the equipment we do have, which is fully equipped, that costs you about 20,000 euros more than that. Our test drive with the brand new Volvo V60. And the question was how much sportiness and how much premium we're gonna find in that car. And I have to say that car not only looks very sporty and dynamic, you can also really drive that car the way you want, even if you want to do push it a bit more to the limits. On the other hand, when we talk about premium, the only thing you really have to do is look inside the car. The craftsmanship as well as the materials like the leather are absolutely fabulous and I think very well made. So it's an absolute pleasure to sit inside of that car. The only thing I can complain about with this car is the price because that car as it stands here costs you 74,400 euros here in Germany. But on the other hand, if you want to spend that money, you really get a very unique, very nice car, very sporty estate. And this is a car not everybody will drive. 